Howdy. Today we're looking at Mirage and how she's actually pretty good. I mean, that's not exactly uncommon knowledge. I think a lot of people realize she's really good, but outside of like speed running, exterminates, or doing arbitrations, I actually don't see her as much as I think she deserves to be played. She's a very underrated frame. I know that's <laughs> that's crazy. So I, I already know without a doubt. Someone in the comments is going to say I'm an idiot for saying she's underrated, okay? They probably already paused the video and won't even hear this part of it. But I do think relative to her power level, she is underrated because of, like I said, outside certain people speed running most shit or arbitrations. Casual players, in my experience, I never see them play Mirage. And that's sad because she's actually really fun. She isn't just a weapons platform. She can do more than that. So we will be going over her and two different builds in this video. So let us first immediately show her fashion in case you're interested. This is supposed to be like my Kuva Jester look to it, right? Or that's literally the name of it, Kuvail Jester. I don't know. I think more like an imp is what I think of when I see her, like a Kuva imp girl. And I very much like how it looks. So, I do have Archon shards, okay? Like, full disclosure, five Tau Forge shards on her. You do not need Archon shards on her, but holy hell does Casting Speed help on her. If you do not use Casting Speed shards, I would recommend Matarai. But, if you don't need that, you can actually go any one of the Focus Schools if you want. Nairmon is nice for melee. You could go Yuneru if you need to have resistance to getting knocked down, like you don't have Prime Sure Footed. Mad Ride for casting speed or strength or to be able to kill like Thrax, Spectral Forms, and Void Cascades. Xenric if you need energy, and Vazarin is just nice because you get lots of survivability. That's why I like Vazarin with her, because her biggest problem usually is survivability. Now, my five shards are two Tau casting speed. To help with the horrible casting speed on her 4 ability. And 3 Tau Forged for ability duration. So that way my the only other duration I have to put on is Prime Continuity. But again you don't need these. You can make her perfectly viable with 0 Archon Shards. So let us go here I guess. this uh, I'm not just going to do a general overview of her abilities. So her passive is sliding last 85% longer and acrobatic maneuvers are 50% faster. That's pretty nice. I like it. Just makes you feel like you're a lot faster as a Warframe. Her first ability, Hall of Mirrors. Mirage creates an entourage of doppelgangers to confuse and distract the enemy. Now these doppelgangers will shoot from their position and two of them will shoot with you, but all four will melee. So if I spawn them in, wait a second, I don't have a melee weapon. Also, it would be easier if I had something like the lens on. That would be great to show how they work. So if we put on lens and then we put on Prisma Oma. So all four of them will melee with you, okay? You can see there's one there, or one in front, one behind, one on your right, one on your left, every side. All four of them will melee attack with you. But only the left and right ones will shoot with you. Now, they will shoot where you aim, however, you have to take into account their position. So if I shoot at a long distance, like from here, you can see their shots ended up in the general area, but still on the right and left-ish of where I shot. However, if they are closer and there's less time to, you know, go diagonally towards the center of where my shot was, like if I shoot right here, you can see there's a bit more distance. Or if I'm right here, wait a second, that ended. If I'm right here, and I shoot, you can see one of them didn't even hit. It was like, wait a second. Look at that. One of them hit the side. So you do need to keep in mind where your shots are or where your clones are and the angles that they're at and where you're shooting if you want them all to hit the enemy. It doesn't matter too much, but it is a nice little detail that I think is worth noting. Now, on top of that, the doppelgangers, they do not do the full damage that you do. It's a 25 second duration, and they do 20% of the damage that you yourself deal. So if you are using a weapon and you hit the enemy for 100,000 damage, that means each clone will deal 20,000 damage, right? The left and the right one, 20k each, for a total of 40,000 damage. 
which means at base you are doing 40% more damage assuming all of their shots hit the enemy. So it's a nice damage increase. It's not as much as Eclipse is, which I'll go over in a second, but it's still nice. More importantly than that is it allows you to apply more status effects, right? Like you can cover a larger area, or if you're doing more than enough damage to kill everything, then you can, all, again, cover a larger area, like by using an AoE weapon, explosive weapon, or Ignis. Ignis is really fun to use with her. It just destroys everything. But I digress. It's a very good ability and definitely nice to have. I would never subsume over it. Her second ability, Sleight of Hand. Booby trap nearby objects while conjuring an irresistible jewel that bursts with radial blind when touched in darkness or radial explosion in light. Conjure multiple smaller jewels with the help of hull mirrors. This is okay. Ignore the explosive legerman part on the bottom. That's because I have the augment on. But the ability itself just sort of like creates little bombs that don't do a whole lot they do some amount of damage or they can blind but it's not that great on its own this is honestly what i would subsume over if you aren't building into it then we have eclipse eclipse if you tap it you get a damage buff and if you hold it you get damage reduction this used to be you would get a damage buff if you were in the light in a damage uh, reduction while you're in the dark <laughs> so it was really stupid but they changed it in a update not too long ago called Dante and Bound so tap it if you I think tapping it might be a base I might have it reversed so you, you may need to read it to make sure you know which one is which but you can also recast it and you can see the effect so if I tap it you can see that I'm like sort of glowing but if I hold it I'm all dark and shadowy okay darkness damage reduction light damage buff so if you need to not die you can go for tanky if you need more damage you go for big pv damage so use whichever one you feel you need it caps out the damage reduction at 90 percent the base is 75 but it scales with strength so you can get up to 90 percent it is her helmet ability so you can put it on other frames however the damage reduction of 75 cannot go higher than 75 it's just 75 regardless of what your strength is when you use it as a helmet and the damage increase is nuked from 200 percent base to 30 percent base if it's the helmet's version so you know that's kind of a yikes but it's not the end of the world so then we have her fourth ability i have to switch builds so i can you know hover over it. it's literally a floating disco ball Prism. Fires an energy prism that shoots lasers in all directions. Activating again detonates the prism, blinding nearby foes. So you charge it up and throw it out. It consumes energy on cast and energy per second while it's out. Which means if you have energy nexus or Zenerk or something, you won't be able to get the energy per second while the ability is active because it consumes energy per second. And if you didn't know, those two types of things cannot exist at the same time. So you cast it. Oh, wait, I have the augment on. This is the wrong build. Hang on a second. I'm going to show that build in a second. Okay, let's try this again. You cast it, and it just flies in whatever direction you throw it. And it will just shoot enemies and bounce off of shit, right? So, like, if it hits this wall... Is it going to hit the wall? No, it went through. Fuck. Well, you can tap it again to manually detonate it. So you can see my energy goes down per second. I can detonate it. It hits a wall. It bounces off. On its own, it's not that great without the augment unless you're in a really tight corridors kind of map. But if you are in, are in tight spaces like a hallway, you can make use of it. So it's not a totally worthless ability. Anyways, that's the gist of her abilities. So if you're going to build, you can either go for her Eclipse and Hall of Mirrors as like a weapons platform. Or you can go for Sleight of Hand with the Augments, or you can go for Prism with or without the Augments. So there's a couple build options. I'm actually going to show three builds. I know I said two at the start, but I meant to say three. So first off, we have her Weapons Platform build. That is what I'm going to show first. She is lacking Armor Strip. Nowadays, that's not nearly as important, but Armor Strip would still be very nice to have. And what I love on her is the Helmet ability from Jade. The moment Jade came out and I looked at what her helmet ability was, 
open him in eyes, the first thing I thought of was Mirage. As soon as I got Jade, the first thing I did was level her up, feed her to the helmet, speed the helmet process up so I could get it immediately and put it on Mirage. Because I was like, oh buddy, this is what we want. And I was right. It's perfect for her. So what Open Him Eyes does is after you cast it, there's glowing lights, right? Six eyes around you. It's hard to see with this color actually here. Let me switch to a brighter color. I think this should do. So you cast it and you can see the glowing everywhere. Wherever you look within the light radius, it will strip enemy armor per second and also apply a slow per second. Also, once the enemy has been fully stripped, it will apply one singular heat proc. You can see it also does a bit of damage. And fully stripped, there it is the heat proc. The heat proc and the damage it does itself are so small that it's irrelevant. So don't worry about that. But the, all you do is look at an enemy and their armor strip. Building for range only increases how far it goes, not the angle. Building for strength only increases how fast it strips defenses, not how fast it builds the slow. So I don't think you really need range on this. I would not go negative range though, because that would suck. But base range for the 20 meters is perfectly fine in my opinion. It also has a base uh, duration of 30 seconds. So this gives you a comfy, consistent, easy armor strip everywhere you go. It's just, it's perfect for Mirage. It's perfect. So I subsumed it over her too. Now, like I said earlier, Mirage has a big problem with survivability. She has no real survivability uh, abilities. She does have the doppelgangers, which can draw enemy fire. But the problem is sometimes they don't do a good job of that and if the enemy is using an aoe attack and they attack your doppelganger well you're right next to them <laughs> so you're gonna get fucked over just like they are doesn't really fix that problem so we need some level of survivability that is why i opted for some level of shield gating but it's not really meant to be for brief respite specifically so Brief Respite is here so that if we do cast our abilities, we can get our shields back, all of our shields back, because we have Catalyzing Shields. We have Eclipse can be recast, and so can Open Him Eyes, so you can Panic Pop them, Panic Recast them to get your shields back to not die. But, more importantly than that, I have Fast Deflection, so that if we don't get hit for a decent amount of time, we start regenerating shields. And with the at least some level of aggro drawing from our doppelgangers, Plus being able to run around a lot, right? We're super fast because of our passive. Like, look at this. We're, we're fast as fuck. As long as you're moving around and dodging, you'll be able to regenerate your shields very, very fast. That's why fast deflection plus catalyzing shields is super nice. And again, brief respite is here just for like a panic situation. And then arcane aegis so that if it procs, we get 12 seconds of basic invincibility outside of taking toxin damage. So this just gives even better survivability. We have negative efficiency, but because of the cheap cost of your abilities, that's not a problem if you have Energize. You could try to put Equilibrium in this build or run something else, but for what I'm using, Energize is perfect because it gives as much energy as we need. I never have energy problems. Energize fixes all of it. But yeah, the base cost of your first ability is 25. If you're using Sleight of Hand, that costs 50. Open him eyes is also 50. Eclipse is only 25, and it's 75, or sorry, 50 on cast for Prism, and then 10 per second. So she doesn't have too much of an energy problem. So running Blind Rage is an easy yes, because you get all of that strength. Because you want to build her as a weapons platform, or at least in this way we do, we want strength and duration, so that we can have our abilities last longer, so we don't have to recast them, and we get more damage. That's why you have Blind Rage and Umbral Intensify for strength. And then we already went over survivability. We want energy from prime flow, prime continuity for duration. Now, if you don't mind recasting abilities, there's no problem because you can get by without these towers. But the reason I did these is so that I can still have high duration without running narrow minded. So I could fit into the build decent range for open mines while also having the open mod slot to put fast deflection on. Other than that, we are running both of her augments for hauled mirrors and eclipse. The Hull of Malevolence augment makes it so every kill you get during your Hull of Mirrors will increase the damage done by your doppelgangers by 5% and it caps out at 50%. That is a percentage based off of how much damage you're dealing, right? 
or at least I'm I'm fairly certain, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Check the wiki, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So like, let's say I had base strength. My clones would do 20% of my damage. If I had this maxed out, my clones would do 70% of my damage. It does reset every time the ability ends, so having high duration does help this, but it only takes 10 kills to max out, which you can do pretty fast. So this gives us a lot of extra damage. Next, we have Total Eclipse. The Eclipse Augments. While active allies within 15 meters benefit from Eclipse. You might be thinking, who the fuck cares about my teammates? I want myself to do all of the damage. But you still want this for more damage. Because Eclipse only applies to yourself. It does not apply to your doppelgangers. Your doppelgangers have your weapons and they do a percentage of the damage that you are dealing, but they do not get the bonus damage from Eclipse. Total Eclipse applies it to them because it has that 15 meter radius even if you had negative range like four meters it would still be enough to apply to your your uh, doppelgangers so if you want maximum damage go both of these augments very important and that's the gist of the build you can still use your four because we have decent range and strength it will do some damage but not like a crazy amount so first let's get Ignis because like I said Ignis is great we can use Ignis as an example weapon we will I think I just want to go full heat on this thing because that should properly show what it's like right yes so we'll take off that um what am I missing here we don't need primed shred I guess corrosive heat would probably be the play because well you know we want to actually do some level damage yeah we'll go corrosive heat there we go now first I'm not gonna cast my abilities you can see nothing affects my damage until I cast my abilities make sure these guys are full health level 180 steel path corrupted heavy gunners the only thing that has to build up damage wise other than my galvanized multi shot right would be the damage from primary merciless so it's not going to get too much higher than what it is right now but it will increase to some of you you can see it's not great you know part of the problem being ignis is just an outdated weapon that could really use a cooler variant but it's at least able to kill now let's reset these enemies now we can go bam and bam and bam the armor strip is actually completely unnecessary now the corrosive because we have armor strip from open demise all we got to do is look at this crowd of enemies and then they're going to armor strip over time it's beautiful and now we just shred the crap out of them keep in mind though this is still ignis so it still isn't <laughs> amazing damage but <laughs> That's obviously significantly more damage than it was doing before. I mean, we killed like two enemies with two magazines. Now we took less than half a mag to kill the whole group. Obviously a nice increase. Also, something I forgot to mention is if you cast Eclipse in dark mode, it makes it so that your prism costs less energy. If you use it in light mode your prism deals bonus damage not the bonus damage from eclipse itself the damage buff but a flat 100% damage increase that does not scale with strength but it's still double the damage so if you want to do more damage there is that and I will go ahead and show this first without the armor strip you can see that without stripping their armor it doesn't do a whole lot but if I strip their armor, I'm just going to leave them at what HP they are. Oh, wait, that was the wrong ability. Just stripping away. Strip their armor every day. There we go. Okay, now we can toss our prism in. And it's doing a fair bit more. Look at that. It's actually killing enemies. And this is without any sort of viral or anything on the enemies, because there's no status application from your prism. It does deal radiation damage, but it does not apply the radiation debuff. Another thing to note is that the prism targets enemies. That's how it doesn't just shoot lasers randomly. It is targeting the enemy. You can see the laser goes to the enemy. 
and the laser can go through enemies as well. So if there's enemies, four enemies in the line, it's going to target, it can see through enemies, right? It can target all four enemies. And that means if it's perfectly in front of the enemy, it should be able to have all four lasers hit the front enemy, right? Because it's going to have the one here, so only one will reach him. But it's also targeting... Uh, oh wait, no, actually other way around, the guy in the back. So one hits this guy and goes no further. Then one hits this guy, but it's also hitting this guy. It has to go through him to hit him. Then there's the one targeting this guy, but the one for this guy and this guy have to go through it to hit him. And then same again for this guy. So this guy should have four lasers hitting him. So you would think grouping works, but if you group enemies and you ragdoll them, it actually tends to screw things up. Like the hitboxes get kind of funky, as you can see, it's not even hitting them. So I still would not group. It's just nice to have if enemies are standing in a line. But again, don't group with, or at least not with ragdoll stuff, because that's just going to screw it up. That's the gist of this build. There's not really much else to it. It's pretty straightforward gun platform. Now on to the next build. This build is almost exactly the same. The only difference is we get rid of some of our strength. Umbral Intensify is gone. We replace it with Vigilante Vigor so that we have even more survivability. So we have amazing shield recharge. Now look at this shield recharge. It only has a 0.3 second delay and it takes like one and a half seconds to get all of our shields back because we aren't running Brute Respite so we don't have that oh shit button. Corrosive Projection, even though we still have open and eyes, because this just makes it so it takes less time to strip all of their armor. And that way, if we don't look at enemies for long enough, because it does take a while to strip their armor with open and eyes, that way we still, you know, have a fair bit of their armor strip, just for extra damage. Precision Intensify, I do have on instead of Umbral Intensify here as well. So it doesn't apply to our 1 or our 3, but it goes to our 4, which is what this build is around. We have Prism Guard as the augments. Prism Guard makes it so your prism, instead of floating around everywhere, it just sits above your head. That's literally it. Uh, the downside would be that it changes the duration to 4 seconds, which is very, very rough, considering the base duration on it is 12 seconds, so it lasts a third as long. But it will go wherever you go, so it's just a death beam right on your shoulder. Other than these three mods and the aura, everything's the same. It's so you can still, you know, have a gun platform. It's just not quite as strong as my first build was. And Open Demise is still here because Armor Strip is very important for our prison to do damage. So, oh wait, they, they have less armor because I have Corrosive Projection on. So if I don't strip their armor, we do want to have these cast... Your doppelgangers do not shoot an extra prism. They do the animation like you do, but they actually don't do anything for your prism. Only Eclipse in the light form does, really, for your damage. But we can cast this. And once it ends, it's going to explode, of course. It does pretty good damage. You can see that it killed quite a lot. Or it didn't kill any of them, but it did decent damage. I don't know why it wasn't able to hit those guys. All four lasers were hitting this guy. You can see this guy took way more damage than, say, this guy. Just like I said earlier. But that was without us stripping armor. The only armor strip was corrosive projection. And, you know, you can always apply viral and stuff. And we can shoot. Like, this is just happening passively while we're attacking the enemies. But we can also shoot them to do more damage. So let's say I armor strip them all. Of course, you're not always going to have them fully armor stripped, but just for the sake of it, we're going to go ahead and just make sure they're all stripped. Because I can, and we want to see that big PP damage so, you know, people get massively turned on by it. Now, let's cast this ability again. You can see it's doing significantly more damage now that they're fully armor stripped. It killed almost all of them literally one enemy remains it's pretty good it's just like you're running around you cast it and it murders shit while you also murder shit it does have a horrible base duration of four seconds like i said with my 200 percent duration it's eight seconds so not long but it's just a nice death beam that can just shoot everything you see to do extra damage the casting speed is horrible but like look at this that's 
a longer casting speed than our shield gate, and that's with two Tau Forged casting speed charts. That's why using the ability without casting speed is a death sentence. You're pretty much fucked. So when I use the ability, I like to like jump and then do it in the air so I'm at least moving while I do it. It doesn't make it cast faster, but it means I don't have to sit in one spot. Other than that, that's literally it. The build's not much different, it's just, you know, Disco Ball, which is funny. They, these, this is actually supposed to be the Dance Party build. Now, finally, is the build you've probably seen most Mirages with if you ever do Sanctuary Onslaught, or Elite Sanctuary Onslaught. Explosive Ledgerman. It's an augment for her too. Sleight of Hand augment. Ammo and orbs pickups are turned into proximity mines that deal a thousand damage with a hundred percent status chance and that scales with strength. So they deal way more damage and they have a guaranteed proc of every base status of elements right so they proc heat, toxin, electric, and cold and that oh wait no that does not scale with strength the status doesn't but the damage does. And the radius does as well, so you want to cast it, and then it just transforms everything, and then more stuff drops, you transform it. It only works when there's already health uh, health orbs and ammo on the ground, though. But you can just make a crap ton of bombs. Wait, let me go back here. I do have brief respite, catalyzing shields, fast deflection again for survivability. Some extra strength, which stretch. But other than that, the build's mostly the same. I'm not using blunt iron rage here because we want armor strip but because of the aoe aspect and going through walls of creating bombs sleight of hand open them eyes doesn't work here very well so we have pillage instead so we get half about half their armor stripped from a single pillage cast even though it doesn't go through walls it still has pretty good hit detection and it also gives us our shields back when they return so we cast it we get our shield gate it returns and we get our shield gate if we don't get hit for a little bit we get our shield gate and Aegis to just have constant shield gates every now and then. So that fixes the survivability issue. This does not scale incredibly well into high level contents. I suppose if you had Panzer Volpa Phyla and you were spamming the crap out of Pillage to just always armor strip and always have Viral on the enemy, then it may do enough damage to kill stuff, but it's not gonna do a whole lot. So let's cast this. You can see not that much damage, even though they are completely armor stripped, which is a very big sad face. Look at this. It doesn't do jack shit without the augments for the most part. But yeah, it's just to kill like low level enemies like in the Sanctuary to just delete them. Oh wow, <laughs> it made a ton of bombs over here. That's funny. You can just spam the bombs over here. You can see there's a little radius that you can see at the outer edge so that you can see how far the range is on the ability. Now, we are going to actually go into a mission and show this off. I don't think I need to show off the gunplay build. That's extremely straightforward, literally just more damage. And I don't think I need to show off the bomb build because it's quite straightforward and I would have to at least kill some enemies before it starts working. And I don't want this video to be too long, it's already quite long. So we will be showing off this build. This is the main one that it would be nice to like see in action. The Disco Ball. And it's very juicy. Again, Ignis is a great weapon to run with Mirage. My personal favorite weapon as of late to use with her is the Scourge Prime. Where's my Scourge? Here's it. I really like using the Scourge. This is the build I have on it, in case you're curious. Oh yeah, and here's the ribbon. Pretty good ribbon. And yeah, that's it. I like to use Vazrin with her, just for more survivability as well. So, but you can run whatever you want. Then for your companion, Panzer Volpa Phyla is great for spreading viral. Nautilus, if you wanted grouping, depending on what build you're using. Or... Worm Prime is also a very nice option because you get, you know, Guardian, Negates, Tenacious Bond, and mostly Reinforced Bond for the extra fire rate. But when I'm using the Disco Ball, I think the best option is Panzer Volpophila to spread viral everywhere. It's quite nice. Okay, let's go into a mission now. We will set it to solo. Now, do we have a good mission to do? Here we go. Exterminate Grenier. Steel Path level 145, and it's part of the Belly of the Beast missions. 
I'm probably going to get killed because the Jade Light Xmas are annoying as shit and there's a ton of them, but oh well. And this video is going to be like 40 minutes long. I keep making videos way too long. But it is what it is. I want to be able to put all the information in one go. Yep, see, here's the stupid Jade Light games. I actually can't stand these. I suck at the game, so killing them is a pain in the ass for me. Also, starting out with energy can be a problem at times, but once you have energy going, you're totally fine. Like, af after I get the first energy orb to proc Energize, I never have energy problems again, assuming I don't have to die and respawn without any of my energy. Alright, cast this! Dang it, Toxin proc! Abilities do do less damage to Overguard, so that can be an issue with your Disco Ball. So definitely make sure you try to shoot the enemies that have Overguard. Otherwise, your Disco Ball is just going to spend a lot of time doing not enough damage to kill anything. Whee! I mean, look at this. Scourge isn't even a good weapon. I mean, I love it, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the Scourge, so in case somebody's about to be like, Scourge is my favorite weapon, how dare you diss it? It's a super fun weapon, it's just not that strong, to be totally honest. But, I mean, Mirage can make any weapon just demolish stuff. I do think she's better in general when you go with an AoE weapon, because AoE weapons usually don't have enough damage to kill high-level enemies fast enough, or like in one shot. Plus your doppelgangers just make their even more AoE spread. But you can use any weapon with her and it will be good. It doesn't have to be an AoE weapon. It's beautiful. Oh yeah, I forgot. I have Reinforced Bond on my Panzer Volpophile as well. That's why I'm shooting so fast right now. Because Panzer can make it work just like Worm Prime can. Worm Prime does get the Negate and Guardian, though, which you can't put Negate or Guardian on a Panzer Volpophila, which is a sad thing. Guardian on Panzer Volpophila would make it even better, because Guardian is just such a great mod for pets. Just so freaking good. But it's not the end of the world to not have it. Ugh. Oh no! I'm getting shredded, except I have, like, unbelievable amounts of shield gate. I'm, I surprisingly enough haven't gotten down yet. I've only had to Vazrin dash myself once. Right? Once? Twice? I think it was once, though it was probably twice actually. Unga Bunga. We're actually almost done with this video. I know, or this mission, I know I'm not great at the game and aiming is not my specialty. I could be speedrunning this way faster and an AoE weapon would definitely make this be a faster speedrun. But I'm just trying to show off. Look at that. Look at all those damage numbers everywhere. Just killing them all. It's beautiful. It almost killed that Exodus dude by itself. I don't think I hit any of my skirt shots on this guy. Oh wait. You always gotta make sure you keep casting your abilities though. Especially Eclipse to be able to get that bonus damage to your Disco Ball. But this build right here has been what I've been mostly playing. Mirage with this build or one of my Yoreli builds is like the only thing I've been playing in the Ascension game mode because I've just, just been enjoying them so much, especially this Mirage with Scourge. Mirage and Scourge are just so, so fun together. There we go, I think that showed it off. Again, those guys were level 145 Steel Path Grenier, and like half of them are Jade Light Eximus because Belly of the Beast alerts make it so there's like way more Xmas than there realistically should be and we still destroyed it we didn't get downed at all even though i suck it worked out just fine so you can see our survivability is perfectly fine as long as you keep moving as long as you're constantly moving your survivability is no problem that's gonna be it for the video i didn't show these builds but that's because i wasn't using those weapons if you like the video then leave a like and subscribe adios